A personal response to George Graham's creation paintings. On the process of painting, George Graham wrote, Imagination is a root element and the human quality love another. The anonymous medieval mystic, author of the treatise The Cloud of Unknowing, wrote, God created us to love and everything else in God's creation helps you love. George Graham was a deeply pious individual. For him, just like for our anonymous medieval mystic, celebrating the wonder of God's creation helped bring him closer to the divine power. For both love and deep contemplation of the natural and cosmic world were pathways to love of the creator. About nature, Graham wrote in 1937 in a letter to a friend, Harold Cheeseman. I love what we call nature, another word for the works of God. And as the years went on, this love became boundless and the desire to express it became a physical hurt. His writings continue as he explains how, I quote, it depends on your love, which draws out from nature secrets and inspirations, visions undreamed of by those who cannot love deeply. Graham experienced images of the process of divine creation as visions that came to him in his dreams. This body of work was so important to him that he changed his painting style, a style that had garnered him a very successful career, in order to create a new pictorial language and idiom to do justice to what he was experiencing and to record the wonders that came to him in these dreams. At the time of embarking on the project of the creation paintings, Graham was almost completely deaf. This was very relevant because music had always given him joy and sustained him, particularly that of the composer Beethoven. I will return to the significance of Beethoven a little bit later in this talk. Meanwhile, returning to the paintings, a quality of the artworks that really strikes me is their relative flatness. Graham creates a very slight sense of perspective through subtle layering and, and recession. The lack of a vanishing point perspective, which usually enables the viewer to go on a journey through the painting as though a window onto the world within the canvas, is important because in many works this effect conveys an absolutism almost as though the viewer is being confronted with the great truth that is the creator. As such they are documents that attest to the reality of the existence of God. His close friend Hugh Griffiths recalls how People would often say to Graham that they didn't understand his paintings, to which he would reply, why do you want to? This response honours the mystery of great spiritual things that are beyond the human intellect. In so doing, this expresses the power beyond our fathoming that will always be hidden to us. Here again, Graham's opus calls to mind the message of the author of The Cloud of Unknowing. For the cloud is that which stands between our human minds and knowledge of the divine creator. With their flatness and baroque quality also reminded me of stage sets. This has a resonance for me because for nearly 15 years before becoming disabled, I worked as a stylist, conceptualist and costume designer for magazines, films and opera. One of the first books I ever bought with money saved from a cleaning job 
that was going towards me putting a, po a portfolio together was called Ballet Designs Past and Present by Cyril W. Beaumont. It was a real joy for me to look through these pages and be inspired with ideas that would later become storyboards the uh, to get work. present forms that conjure what become essential symbols for cataclysmic creation events, acting almost as pictographs for momentous happenings and wondrously mind-blowing events. Turning to Beethoven... Graham loved Beethoven. I find a note in his letters incredibly moving, where alone and suffering, he writes how with the stabs of pain a lovely tune comes to mind and how when I quote a wicked pain comes, it is met from a tune from a Beethoven symphony or sonata. It's important to remember that like the great comp composer, Graham was deaf at this point, so the symphony he was hearing was conjured in his imagination. The affinity between the two is underscored by Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, Ode to Joy, with Friedrich, Friedrich Skip Schiller's words sung by the chorus. They say, Do you sense the creator world? Seek him above the starry canopy. The words are majestic and celestial. They continue, there must dwell a loving father. The link becomes even more moving when I learned that at its premiere, Beethoven, sitting next to the conductor, was turned round so he could see the rapturous applause of the crowd because he couldn't hear it. When I'm in pain, my mind often takes me away to the vision of a favourite painting or a place. It's almost like our psyches supply our innermost selves with that which we find beautiful to succour and uplift our spirit. These are complete sensory memories of sounds and images etched for our inner eyes to see and help us through. Two of my favourite paintings from the creation series are The Creation of the Fishes and The Creation of the Flowers, 1935-38. to 38. In the former, about the fishes, I love the spiralling energy of the water eel on the upper right, while the huge backward S of a large sea snake is powering through the water, from the bottom to the top of the canvas. There's a whiplash synergistic energy and I sense the thrum amidst the great ocean silence of music. Shafts of light cut in front of and behind these sea creatures affecting an illumined dynamism that has a sense in the creation of, of the divine flowers, energy. The interconnectedness between the golden light and the flowers is tapestry-like, as the two seem woven together. I love how the flowers resembling daisies increase in size, as if they're blooming as the eye moves up to the top corners of the canvas. The hemisphere of green earth is echoed by the implied convex created by the spreading foliage that seems to be still growing at the edges of the painting. For me, the flowers dazzle and float. Those in the centre are airborne above the sun as they syn synthesise with the golden light. Although of the earth, the image also feels celestial. The viewer is seeing new life emerge in a divine emanation of light. <laughs> 